I think you come to the Belgium to win it. One that shall we fight. Hello, it's the 2019 football season, and that means it's time for the Don Morrell Show, your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Little Giant program. And coach, welcome to a new start to the season. I know it's been an unusual schedule to start the season. Uh, you only had a chance to really see the freshman players uh, for the first three days before they got involved in orientation uh, because of the, the shortened calendar. It's been a couple of weeks since you've actually seen them against other competition in a scrimmage, but we finally get to football for the, the start of the season this Saturday at Wisconsin Stevens Point. Uh, give me a little bit of rundown. How did camp go for you, the coaching staff, and the players, and what have you learned about this football team through the first few weeks? Well, with the delayed start, we're certainly ready to play and excited to play. I hope we're ready to play a football game, but we're excited to get this thing underway. Um, a uh, very good camp, tremendous group of kids, like always, at Wabash College. Um, excited about our freshman group. You're going to see some of those guys on the field uh, this week. And then uh, returners came back in tremendous physical uh, and mental condition, and we're looking forward to a great, great football season in 2019. Well, you mentioned those returners, and you have a boatload of them on the defensive side of the football. Let's kind of talk about the team starting there, and let's start in the de defensive backfield where you have all four starters returning. That includes a senior in, uh, in Artie Akiwa who starts at uh, your safety position. He will be playing in his 30th game of his career on Saturday when he takes the field. Uh, he's just been a tremendous leader for you. Tremendous leader. He's, uh, for the second year in a row, he's a captain, uh, excellent student. Same with Jake Page, the other safety, Jose Franco at a corner. He was the conference freshman player of the year last year. Um, he returns, and uh, Pat Kelly uh, at the other corner. So it's, it's great to have those guys back. I, I think I'm uh, equal excited because we, we have uh, really some good depth also. Uh, Cameron Ferguson is a really good football player. He's a backup corner, Johnny Lamb's a backup corner, uh, Adam Zorich at safety. Um, we feel like we have some depth, uh, and, and we haven't had that in the secondary in a number of years. Linebacker is another position where you bring back a lot of talent and ability, and it really starts with a young man that's coming back for a fifth year. Uh, he'll be a fifth year senior, and that's Brock Heffron, who's another captain on your football team and just an outstanding, talented inside linebacker for you. Really is, great kid. Uh, you know, it, it works out with medical issues that guys do have an opportunity to come back for a fifth year. Uh, I don't know when the last one we had at Wabash College was, but Brock's doing it, it's, it's tremendous. He's, uh, he's got one class to finish his degree. That's kind of a, that's an NCAA rule. He could have walked last May, but he decided to come back and play, and he uh, uh, delivers sandwiches during the day for Jimmy John. <laughs> so uh, he returns. Jackson Garrett returns. Uh, they both started last year. Uh, very talented inside linebacking uh, group. And we don't want to leave out. Brock also works for a security firm as well. Um, uh, Mike McCarty, uh, who... Uh, uh, local uh, gentleman who runs a good safety and security system. Uh, Brock works for him, is looking to get in some of that law enforcement, so it's given him a good opportunity to do that. You also bring back some good outside linebackers, including your leading tackler from a year ago uh, in Brandon Yagi. So some good talent and, and a lot of good players to back up those guys at the linebacker position. We do. Andrew Sanders is a very good uh, football player also. Ye Yegi really came on last year at the middle of the year and uh, had a tremendous football season. Uh, you also uh, look at guys like Jared Bertram uh, Absolutely. Who, who come in and, and fill some of that role as well. Uh, and then you move to the front line and it starts with Blair Brody in the middle. Uh, you've got a lot of different players that will run in and out on the outside and probably one of the freshest faces and most welcome fresh faces on that front line is a young man by the name of David Marsh. 
David Marsh, uh, we recruited him out of high school. He ended up getting a football scholarship to Miami of Ohio. Uh, somewhere in his sophomore year, he realized Wabash was just a superior institution, so he came back and he's transferred in. He's fit right in. Uh, he's a uh, SIG guy. Uh, I think he's going to do great things here at Wabash. Unfortunately, one of the uh, uh, one of the uh, down moments in camp, we did lose Don Shook uh, for the season to a knee injury. Uh, he's having his surgery today, as a matter of fact, and we wish him the best. Absolutely. Don had a tremendous season last year and was looking forward to a really good season this year before that knee injury has sidelined him for the year. Uh, had really gotten off to a good start in your scrimmage at Indiana Wesleyan. Uh, so he'll be someone who will be missed up front, but it gives an opportunity to, for someone else to step up and, and play a role on that front line. I think, you know, between uh, Macaluso, Kenny Coleman, uh, Malcolm Lang, we really have a peck. We have tremendous depth in that defensive line. We'll move over to the offensive side of the football. We'll leave one position for last to talk about. So we'll start up front with the offensive line. This is another good veteran group. You've got some guys that have moved positions a little bit, but it's a good veteran group that have played together over the last couple of years. Youngest member of that front line is gonna be Dane Smith. The rest of them really have a lot of experience that they bring into the, uh, the 2019 season. Well, I, I think it's a, they're a talented group. Physically, they're a very big group. Uh, three of those guys are over 300 pounds. Both the tackles are 275 pounds, and they have just performed well starting from last year and then in camp and in the scrimmages we've had, they've done a nice job. You've got a very talented group of freshman offensive linemen as well who've looked very good in the scrimmages, I, th I think. Yep, absolutely. We move to the wide receiver position. Uh, probably the, one of the positions that graduation hit the hardest uh, from last season. You lose two outstanding wide receivers in Oliver Page and Ryan Thomas, but you've got some talent coming back and you also have some good freshmen who can step into that role. And it all starts with Rashawn Jones, who's the returning veteran from that wide receiving. Group. Rashawn Jones comes back uh, and he, he did miss several games last year with injury. It's great to have him back. Uh, there are guys who've been hiding in the weeds because of Oliver Page and Ryan Thomas who now get their chance to play Devin Anderson, uh, Nick Hammond. Uh, we have a freshman, uh, Cooper Sullivan, who's going to see time on the field. Uh, talented group. Also, Kyle Stroh has made the move from defense to offense, and uh, uh, he's going to play a ton for us, too. And then one guy we always forget to talk about, Ivan Martinez, who is a senior, and uh, I don't know that he is, he hadn't started as many games as Artie, but I think he's probably appeared in 30 football games uh, at Wabash. He's played a lot. Oh, he's been a staple on special teams as he's, he's kind of split duty between being an offensive lineman early in his career and also sliding out to that tight end position. Uh, he's kind of locked in at that tight end position. And you also have a couple of guys who are playing kind of a fullback, H-back position uh, to give you a little extra blocking uh, out on, out in front of the running backs or a little extra pass protection. Uh, talk about some of the guys who are playing in that spot. Well, great story. Just on a personal note, uh, Andrew Yazel, uh, this time last year, weighed 311 pounds, and now he weighs about 219 pounds. So he's almost lost 100 pounds uh, and has moved from offensive line to uh, fullback. Charles Bach is a freshman. He's going to play some fullback for us also. Martinez can kind of play uh, the fullback spot, too. He's the poor man's Matt Panola this year, playing all the spots. So uh, uh, no complaints with any of those guys. Uh, we talked about this when we were discussing the preview we posted online. How tough is it to lose a player like a Matt Panola? I mean, with all the things that he brought to your football team, how do you try and replace that? Well, you know, uh, now that camp has ended, it... it Turns out Ivan is that guy. Ivan can just do, and you need somebody who's been in the program for a bunch of years, who's played different spots, and there are so many things you just can't get to and coach up, and some guys do it naturally. Uh, Ivan really is that guy. 
Let's move to the last two positions on the offense before we go to special teams. Running back, you may have a wealth of experience there. We're, we're looking at uh, some guys coming back from some injuries. The biggest injury that we know of, of course, is the one to Ike James. Last year in the second game of, season, of the season against Stevens Point, he went down with a season-ending knee injury. He's back, seems to be healthy, ready to go, and that gives you a thousand yard rusher from two seasons ago, uh, 20 touchdowns in his rookie campaign with Wabash after coming uh, from St. Joseph's when that school closed. How great is it to have him back in the backfield? It's for you? great to have Ike back. In fact, uh, it tells you the kind of person he is. Ike didn't play last year in eight games, but he was elected as one of our captains um, for this season. So, uh, it's great just his attitude and just to have him back out there. He is a football playing fool from Lowell, Indiana, and uh, loves this place. And, uh, you know, just uh, it was really tough going through a knee injury, but he did it, uh, contributed any way he could, including picking up trash on the sideline during games. So uh, we look for big things from Ike. And then last year, Isaac Avant. Uh, rushed for over a thousand yards, really stepped up, had big, big shoes to fill. Uh, he did that and he's back for his senior year. And uh, we're going to try and get them both on the field at the same time. Yeah, that uh, could be a real nightmare for opposing defensive coordinators. When you look in the backfield and you see 2,000 yard running backs, and, and Isaac Avant is the type of player we saw it a couple of times last year, two 98 yard touchdown runs. The second he touches the ball, he's got a chance to get into the end zone because he's just so fast, elusive, and can break through tackles. Yep. That moves us to the quarterback position. You've got four guys who, who are in that rotation. I'm not going to ask you who the starting quarterback is unless you want to share it with us today, but talk a little bit about how camp has gone with Jake Reed and with the freshman Liam Thompson, a good sophomore returner in Seth Gallman, and another uh, freshman in Carson Goodman. Yeah, uh, you know, competition just makes you better, and you don't have many bad days. Our quarterback play was outstanding in camp. Uh, it was outstanding in our two scrimmages, and uh, we're not ready to announce who the starter is to answer your question or cut to the chase there. But uh, I, I, I really do believe we're going to have, uh, I think, a great quarterback and then also a ridiculously good backup quarterback too and the third guy is pretty good also we were talking again last week getting ready for the preview and you told me something interesting about how uh, you select the starting quarterback at the end of all the evaluation and you you said you know it's it's more mathematical instead of going with what you see it's not like looking at artwork can you can you explain that to our audience well you can you, you need to go back and look at every throw and write down was it completed did the wide receiver drop it was there really a miss um, did he have a bad mental day did he go the wrong way on a certain play and uh, it becomes clearer and clearer I, I think but uh, this, you know, at, at, uh, uh, at any school to have a real quarterback battle is a good thing. You, your team gets better because of it. The quarterbacks get better because of it. Unfortunately, one guy doesn't get to get to start, um, but it, I believe it's helped us. That moves us to the final portion of the game itself. In an area that I think it would be fair to say you're looking for the most improvement from this year uh, is special teams, uh, the, particularly in the kicking game, uh, in field goals and extra points. Uh, that's going to be Jacob Handley and Skyler Narig. Uh, you've got a punter, uh, for a sophomore now, in Joey Ane, who had a very good uh, season once he came on board as the punter about midway through the year and provides an excellent leg in that area. Uh, tell us a little bit about the special teams. Well, uh, we st there's no secret, we struggled in the kicking game last year with extra points and field goals. Skyler went to a camp this summer. It's helped him tremendously. I see uh, Jacob's gonna kick the extra points. He just, uh, he's been perfect at it. He kicked them in the Bell game last year as a freshman. So we're fine there. Skyler is more the uh, long distance field goal kicker 
and uh, has had a tremendous camp kicking off. Uh, Joey is just an incredibly laid back dude who doesn't seem to become unglued about anything and uh, really uh, had a tremendous season last year. He played in the last four football games and we're, we're looking for big things this year from him. That moves us to this weekend. Uh, mm -hmm. You get a chance to see the team on the field against Wisconsin Stevens Point. This is a football team we saw for the first time last year. This is a big, talented football team. Last year, uh, they came here to Crawfordsville. We were able to come up with a 16-13 victory. They've already got a game under their belt. What do you expect to see from them in their second game after having seen them play John Carroll in a loss uh, by the Pointers against John Carroll uh, last weekend? Well, uh, defensively, they're really physical. Up front, they have tremendous size, and uh, we're going to have to hold our own just not to get knocked backwards. It's, it starts there. Uh, very good at the inside linebacker spot. They have a safety who uh, played safety last year, put on 20 pounds, and is playing inside linebacker now, who I think is a really good player. Um, and then they're talented on the back end. Uh, up front offensively, I, I think their head coach just knows, he knows what he's doing on offense. And uh, it was a challenge last year. Last year we got a little break because it, it poured rain throughout the game and it was just hard to throw the ball. Um, it looks like the weather is going to be nice and, and we just need to play a great football game to, uh, uh, to beat these guys. As we continue to look at some highlights from last year's game, again a 16-13 victory for Wabash here in Crawfordsville. Uh, we head up to Wisconsin this year for the game. Uh, last year you were able to really kind of keep their running game under control. They had 32 carries for a total of 64 yards, one touchdown. Uh, what do you expect to see from them on the ground and how will you try and combat that? I think last year they were geared more to throw it and unfortunately for them, they got a, a rain game. And uh, I like to throw the football too, but if it's pouring rain, it's, it's difficult to do. There's no two ways or about it, around it. Uh, this year, it looks like the weather's gonna be nice. So uh, they're making a more uh, uh, stronger effort to run the ball. They have some heavy personnel groups. Uh, that concerns us quite a bit. Um, so, and they have more balance to their offense. They are going through a little bit of a switch at quarterback. They had a, a young man who had played the last five games at quarterback for them last season in Harrow. Went down with an injury on Saturday. They had to go back to Matt Urbaski, who is uh, their experienced quarterback, but they had moved him out to a wide receiver position. How difficult is that for any football team when you, you know what you want to do with the personnel and then you have to make a change like that midway through the game? Well, I think when you lose your starting quarterback, that's tough. However, the guy coming back was the starting quarterback. And it, if he was playing wide receiver, it tells me he's plenty athletic. So I think uh, uh, Matt you know, knows what he's doing and I'm, I'm sure he's quickly up to speed at the quarterback spot. You start the season with your two longest road trips of the year. We've got a six hour trip up to Wisconsin on Friday night to get ready for Saturday's game. You're gonna turn right back around and you know start our Great Lakes tour on the uh, Lake Michigan side, uh, going up to Wisconsin, and then we'll continue it going over to Lake Erie, uh, just south of it to Meadville, Pennsylvania to begin conference play next week. How tough is that in terms of the start of the season, in terms of planning and just getting some freshmen used to traveling with college football team? As I go into my eighth year here at Wabash, I think the travel is easier early. So we do have two tough games, two long trips out the gate, but then six out of our next uh, eight games really essentially are home games, if you will, uh, with the Monon Bell game being 25 minutes down the road. So uh, we need to weather the storm. Also, I think when you're talking about Wisconsin or uh, Meadville, uh, those are tough trips in late October mm -hmm. and in November uh, weather-wise. So uh, we're hoping for good weather in both these games. We do travel later this year to Oberlin. Uh, that, that could be a tough weather game, um, but it's part of football in the Midwest. Coach, uh, final thought here. 
What are the, the three keys that Wabash has to execute to win the game on Saturday against Stevens Point? Sure, we need to run the football and not turn it over, and then we can't allow big plays on defense. That game starts at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, 1 o'clock Central Time, uh, uh, up in Wisconsin. We'll have the game for you on 91.3 FM, WNDY Crawfordsville. Uh, that uh, pregame show will begin with this Don Morell show at around 1.30 local time, so we invite you to listen to that. There will be a live video stream available. Links for that are on the Wabash Sports website. Of course, we'll provide updates for you throughout the game on the new Wabash app. We invite you to download that. You can find it on the Google Play Store or in the Apple Store. Uh, look for the Wabash College app. You can download that, keep up to date with your favorite Wabash College teams. And if you're a Wabash student, you can use it to register when you arrive at games and it'll make you eligible for all sorts of different fun prizes and activities. So make sure you check out the Wabash app again on the Google Play Store and in the Apple uh, App Store. Again, we'll have the pregame beginning at 1.30. We look forward to either seeing you up in Wisconsin for the game on Saturday against the Pointers. It is a pink game. Uh, Wisconsin Stevens Point will be raising money for cancer research. Uh, they've graciously asked us to partner with them. Uh, there'll be some uh, pregame and halftime uh, activities around that and a postgame activity, so we're thrilled to be a part of that with them. And they will be making a donation in the name of the Wabash College football team to the American Cancer Society. So we thank uh, Wisconsin Stevens Point, their administration, their athletic department, and their football coaching staff for the opportunity to participate in that. Coach? Safe travels up to Wisconsin. I'll be on the bus with you, so we'll all uh, have a safe trip up together, and we'll talk to you next week. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. You've been watching The Don Morell Show, your chance to hear the thoughts and comments of the head football coach of the Little Giant program. We will talk to you next week. I think you come to the Belgium to win it. The one that always fight.